As of today, my wife Magella and I have been living in Bali for two months. This year, we've booked six international plane tickets, all with frequent flyer points. And well, I have some thoughts. Okay. Anset frequent flyers can earn awards and fly free on four of the world's great airlines. You see, frequent flyer programs have been around for decades. Some people live by them, and others... I'm gonna kill somebody! Not so much. But if there's one thing everyone can agree on, it's that loyalty programs are extremely difficult to get your head around. So while the allure of free travel, lounge access, and upgrades is enough to get anyone excited, this gamification and the obscurity of how it really works has made it quite hard to tell whether this hack is actually worth pursuing or something we should be avoiding at all costs. Now, if I'm being honest, once I learned I could level up my airport delays from this to this, I wasn't gonna be asking any questions. That's not really true. I'm actually kind of a nerd when it comes to this sort of thing. So if anything, I probably ask too many questions. But you know what comes from too many questions? Answers. So sit back, relax, and prepare to learn the truth as I explain how I was able to book so many international plane tickets using points, the secret ways people are earning thousands of points with little effort, and whether these programs are actually worth pursuing today. Before we get into the juicy stuff, let's lay the groundwork. Frequent flyer programs are simply loyalty programs offered by airlines that allow members to accumulate either points or miles which can later be redeemed for plane tickets, seat upgrades, accommodation, retail items, you name it. And just like your standard coffee shop loyalty card, members can earn points by purchasing products or services from the business that issues that loyalty program. For example, members of the Velocity Frequent Flyer program can earn points by buying plane tickets from Virgin Australia. Pretty self-explanatory. But where things really start to get interesting is with credit cards. There's no denying it. Credit card companies love rewards programs. And for today's biggest players, rewards points are now at the center of most of their business models. As you can see here, American Express spent more than $11 billion on card member awards in 2021. So whether the credit card company offers their own rewards program or their cards allow users to earn third-party frequent flyer points, the prominence of rewards in the marketing of these cards is no coincidence. Companies will conduct tens of thousands of experiments each year just to see which unbelievable sign-up bonus, which long list of benefits and which fee structure is going to make them the most money. And it's not like airlines are drawing the short end of the stick either. In 2021, Qantas's loyalty segment brought in more than $1 billion in gross sales. So obviously the credit card companies aren't the suckers, the frequent flyer program owners aren't the suckers, and that only leaves... Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying everyone who participates in frequent flyer programs is getting screwed. After all, considering there are thousands of videos online about how you can travel the world for free, they can't all be lying. But the truth is, most people don't take advantage of these programs. But at the end of the day, regardless of the reason, these rewards programs seem to be here to stay. So having a better understanding for how they actually work will help all of us decide whether we want to pursue them or steer clear entirely. So let's dive in. First step is to try and calculate how much a point is worth. What I do and what I would recommend you do is look for the product that you're hoping to use from the loyalty program and take the dollar cost for that product or service and compare it to the points cost. As an example, for me, my main priority was comfortable domestic travel. And assuming I'm looking into the Qantas Frequent Flyer program, the cheapest I could find was $140 offered through the website Skyscanner. Fortunately, the exact flight I was looking at also offers economy classic reward seats, which can either be purchased entirely for 13,700 Qantas points, or can be booked with a combination of $42 and 8,000 Qantas points. With this in mind, all we need to do to get the value of a Qantas point in this example is take the dollar cost of the flight, which is $140, and divide it by the number of points used to get that same value in a ticket, which would be 13,700. And that gives us a value of almost exactly one cent 
per Qantas point. However, if we were to book this flight with a combination of money and points, the points are actually worth 20% more. So in doing this quick calculation, it's quite easy to find out where your points are going to give you more bang for your buck. But what it also shows is that not all points are made equal, not even if they're from the same frequent flyer program. Now at this point, you may be thinking, well, we've established that rewards points do at least have some value. And I know there are credit cards out there that allow you to earn points every time you spend. And those cards, in some cases, don't charge you any fees. So if I can earn points for free, I may as well do it, right? Well, I'll start by saying I was thinking the exact same thing. And so naturally, as I do, I went away, researched the best zero annual fee credit cards and made a video about it. And ultimately, I ended up deciding on the Qantas American Express Discovery Card. Now, remember how I said I was able to accumulate a lot of points? Well, this wasn't how I did it. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with this credit card, and I honestly still think this is the best one for someone in my situation. But you see, this card earns 0.75 Qantas points for every $1 spend. And well, I just don't spend that much money. And so the amount of Qantas points I'm able to accumulate over the year just putting expenses on the card isn't very much. And this point alone is something that myself and I think a lot of people overlook when they're first getting into frequent flyer programs. Let me show you what I mean. According to the ABS, the average Australian household spends $1,981 per week. And if we multiply that by 52, we can assume yearly expenses of just over $103,000. Now, in reality, you would probably really struggle to put all of those expenses onto a credit card. But for argument's sake, let's say you're able to put three quarters of the expenses onto a credit card and not pay any additional fees. This would mean you'd still be putting $77,259 onto the card every year. And if we assume you were earning 0.75 points for every dollar spent, that would be equal to just under 58,000 points across the year which if used for Qantas domestic flights, could only get you a round trip from Sydney to the Gold Coast for two people. Kinda underwhelming, right? And I know some of you are probably screaming at your screen right now, saying, well, any points are better than none, right? And I would agree, but credit cards are dangerous things. They are proven to cause people to spend more money than they ordinarily would. And so if you end up spending on things that you don't really need or want just because you have a credit card, then those free flights may be costing you more than you think. Now at this point, you're probably like, hmm, I thought this video was gonna be great. I thought I was going to learn how to hack this system and how to make the most of frequent flyer programs. And I hate to break it to you, but like a lot of things in life, we don't always get what we want. But not today, because today you are going to get what you want. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, just keep in mind that a lot of the things I'm going to talk about in this next section may actually be more difficult to implement than they first seem. But if done in the right conditions, can actually help you earn a lot of points quickly and efficiently. And the first method that we're gonna talk about today is something that I like to call double dipping. Let's say I needed to go grocery shopping at Coles. What I would do is I would swipe my Flybys Rewards card, which is the rewards program owned by Coles themselves, and they actually have an option to convert your Flybys points into Velocity Frequent Flyer points. But if I also paid for those groceries using my wife's American Express Velocity Escape card, I'd be earning an additional 0.75 Velocity Frequent Flyer points for every dollar spent in addition to the ones that I get built into the Flybys program. And there are heaps of opportunities just like this. Need to buy petrol? Simply combine Coles Express petrol stations with a Velocity Frequent Flyer earning credit card, double points. Have a phone? Simply connect your Optus plan with your Qantas Frequent Flyer program and pay your bill using a Qantas point earning credit card and double points again. The point is a lot of our everyday transactions have opportunities like this and it's simply a matter of finding the ones that work for you based on your wants and needs. But with all that being said, here's a big disclaimer before we move forward. When being incentivized by frequent flyer points to transact with one company over another, don't forget about the actual cost of the product to begin with 
and whether you may be able to get a better deal with another provider. What I mean by this is don't forget about the point valuation activity we did earlier in the video. You don't want to be spending 20% more on petrol just because you can earn points when those points themselves are only worth one, one and a half cents each. The next strategy, if I'm being honest, won't really be an option for everyone, but if set up effectively, can be one of the best ways to earn points with relatively little effort. The idea is to offer your credit card as a payment option for your close family and friends who don't use or don't want to use a credit card. And I say this because I actually know two people with this very same agreement. For simplicity, let's call them Graham and Dave. Basically, Dave has agreed to put some of his personal and business expenses onto Graham's credit card. Dave himself is not a fan of using credit cards, but he enjoys the perks of having that extra protection on any purchases made through Graham's card. And obviously, Graham can dramatically increase the amount of expenses going onto his card and ultimately the amount of points he's able to earn without having to spend any extra money himself. The next strategy is one that's covered pretty well here on YouTube and that's credit card churning. To keep it short, the basic idea behind this strategy is you identify credit cards with big sign-up bonuses, you apply for those cards, make the minimum spend, earn the points, and then cancel the card before the next annual fee kicks in. Now, the cool thing about this strategy is that it can be repeated and you're able to take advantage of the sign-up bonuses offered by all different providers. Now, obviously, there's more that goes into it than just that, but a few things to keep in mind. In a lot of cases, for the credit cards that offer really big sign-up bonuses, there's gonna be some requirement in order to actually earn the points, whether that's an income requirement just to apply for the card in the first place or a minimum spend once the card is open in order to fully qualify you for that big bonus. And in a lot of cases, these may be hard for beginners to achieve. Now, obviously something like an income requirement is going to be difficult to get around. But when it comes to minimum spend requirements, that's where clever strategies can come into play. Let's say your expenses do fall short of the minimum spend requirements, what can you do? Well, the first thing I would recommend you try is actually pretty similar to the strategy we mentioned earlier in the video, where you approach family and friends who do have big expenses coming up or ordinarily big expenses and see whether they're happy to put those onto your credit card just to help you meet that minimum spend requirement. Alternatively, you could try timing the application of these credit cards to sort of run in alignment with big, not ongoing expenses that you have. For example, you may have larger than normal expenses when you have to renew your car's registration, or maybe you have home renovations coming up. Or if you were like Alan and I, maybe you're about to start a new podcast YouTube channel, which obviously needs a little money upfront to purchase the equipment and get everything ready. And finally, we have the moment you've probably been waiting for. How was I able to accumulate so many points? Well, before you get too excited, this isn't so much a recommended strategy as it is me just wanting to be completely honest with you guys. The real way I've been able to earn so many points is actually through the refer a friend bonuses. You see, when I first got into credit cards and started researching the best ones for me back in 2019, I honestly expected there would be more point earning opportunities because of how earning points is portrayed online. But once I realized it wasn't going to be that easy, I just wrote it off as me simply not being able to qualify for the best cards just yet. But by a complete fluke, after around six months to a year of my first credit card video being live on YouTube, I was on my American Express portal and noticed a refer a friend section. And so I thought, considering I already had a link to the credit card that I was using in the description of that video, I may as well replace that with my specific referral link and just see what happens. Well, not long after that, that very same video started performing really well because it was placing quite high with popular credit card search terms for Australians. And so simply as a result of more people watching that video, Alan and I started to get people using that link to apply for Amex cards. And so the reason I'm mentioning this to you today is so that you can keep that in mind whenever you're watching someone discuss how they earn points and how you can do it too. Just remember, they may be earning points by referring people 
and that may in fact be the way they earn the majority of their points, different to the strategies they may mention in the video. Now to be clear, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong about that. As long as they're providing sound information and they're not trying to mislead you in any way, that's totally fine. But for us, it's important that you, our viewers, know exactly how we were able to earn points and the strategy that has contributed to most of the points we have earned. So with all that being said, I do believe that in the right situation and with the right strategy, frequent flyer programs can absolutely be worth it. And if you play your cards right, yeah, you got that? These programs could be a way to get free, or at the very least, heavily discounted plane tickets and upgrades. But I do think that for people with lower incomes, these strategies are going to be more difficult to pull off. And regardless of your income, anyone taking part in these programs needs to be extremely careful to not overspend for potentially less valuable points. But those are just my thoughts and I'm just some guy on the internet. So if any of you out there actually made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. If you could comment frequent flyer in the comment section, that would be amazing. I'm and I'm honestly interested to see how many people will actually do that. Alan and I are also really close to 10k subscribers, so if you enjoyed the video and you like this content, make sure to go and click that subscribe button. We would really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.